All right, let's go ahead and get started. Over the past six months, I've been to uh, sp around seven word camps. Um, any of you guys attended word camps or supported a word camp? I know you do. Um, word camps are a great resource and opportunity if you haven't uh, tied into them. They're a great way to interact with the rest of the WordPress community, developers, and users. Um, interestingly, um, several times uh, at these word camps, conversation would come up as to what we do, and um, a lot of that kind of revolved around, you know, the unique piece of what we do, which is integrating WordPress with Civi CRM. And the feedback that I've gotten, anyone who is familiar with Civi CRM, even some of the more advanced developers, kind of, you know, gave me this response of, ah, you don't want to do that, or that's not a great idea. And, you know, in exploring that conversation a little bit further, the outcome is always related to the barrier to entry, the challenge of integration, and those sort of things. And so, um, kind of what we're going to talk about today is integrating Civi Serum with WordPress and how we're making an effort to try to make that simpler for people. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and introduce myself and um, some of the companies that I'm affiliated with. RT Imagine is our uh, consulting company and um, we do strictly WordPress integrations with third-party tools for nonprofit organizations. That's our, it's the only thing we do. Um, Civi VIP is a new initiative and that is what these um, integrations are being uh, presented and promoted under. Civi VIP is um, designed and established to be a marketplace for services and premium plugins for integrating Civi Serum with WordPress. So any service providers that are out there that have an interest in being involved in that, uh, this is meant to be an opportunity for them to be involved in that. Um, the idea is just to provide a um, central source of information for nonprofits that they know they can rely on and trust. I'm Nathan Porter, president of RT Imagine, um, and uh, that's how you can get a hold of me. So, um, a lot of, uh, so, let me just say that I'm glad to see all of you here. Um, uh, sometimes it can tend to be that WordPress is a little bit underrepresented um, at civi cons, civi, civi camps, and that kind of thing. You're safe here. You can talk about any <laughs> questions you have without any fear of being ridiculed in any way. So um, with, um, you know, with that, a lot of questions often come up. Why, why WordPress? Why, why did we choose WordPress over the other CMSs, which we have experience with, but we chose WordPress for a reason? One of the <clears throat> big reasons is just the um, community, that, community that's around WordPress. So this is a statistic from BuiltWith, and BuiltWith gives you statistics on web usage um, across a bunch of different tiers. So it's the entire internet. Um, and this is the, from the top one million websites in terms of traffic. Here's the breakdown of CMS usage. So you can see WordPress is about 52%. Um, Drupal is this one here, 5.75%. Joomla is 5.74%. So the big reason that we choose WordPress is um, a lot because of the community of support that's around it. The availability of add-ons and tools that are available to it, including Civi CRM. And also, um, the, because the audience is so large, just by nature of that, um, things tend to be a little bit quicker in response to security flaws, that kind of thing. 52% uh, of the top million CMS websites use WordPress. It's trusted by top brands like Ford Motor Company, Best Buy, National Geographic, Disney, Dish Networks, and many more. And, and we personally know, um, you know a number of the people who have worked on these projects. Um, and it's great, the work that they're doing. Um, World-class security is built in, and that's something that uh, WordPress you know, is in the news a lot because they're a big target um, if you're in the security 
space or tech news, but a lot of uh, times their response is really quick at catching any kind of vulnerabilities. Um, they have advanced user role permissioning. Um, so if you want to segment access to different areas of your site, it's nice that they have that you know, easy capability of, of doing that. Um, and then probably the biggest reason of all, which is again probably why they're so large, and that is their ease of use and low barrier to entry. You know, any host you want to host with, one click install, you're up and ready to go and it's simple, anybody can do it. So let's talk about um, some front facing tools that nonprofits um, would like to use or like to use. Um, cause and donor news feeds. Um, so this is you know, on your website, a feed of either current events about your organization or interesting information for your constituents. Um, member restricted content. So if you have a membership program, a lot of websites who have membership levels will give different access to different content based on that membership. Email list building um, or SMS list building if you do SMS campaigns. Um, donation pages are a big one. Um, and that can expand out to peer-to-peer -peer fundraising pages and all those sort of things. Surveys, um, contact forms, volunteer management, event management, geo-targeted content. So um, a lot of our clients are international or national and they want to target content based on someone's language or someone's um, location in the United States. Um, and then data visualization is another category. So of those, all of these, from a front-end perspective, are forms. Um, and surely, you probably could list other uses that people have. Um, these are just some of the most common ones. And so that pre presents a little bit of a challenge um, sometimes with integrating these sorts of tools with Civi Serum and WordPress. Um, you probably have heard that in Drupal they have a solution with a front-end uh, form building platform. It's very integrated, gives you a lot of functionality. Um, WordPress doesn't really have that at this point. Um, what Civi does have out of the box is front-end elements, which gives you your default profiles that you can list on the front end of the website. Styling those, making them responsive can be a bit of a challenge. So. Um, this is my little thing. After a few uh, attempts and frustration with building some forms with the default Civi Serum front end elements, um, you know, these sorts of forms, and here's my kind of approach. Um, so, picking the right tool for the job. Civi Serum, um, probably the reason you pick Civi Serum is because of the features that it offers, and it offers a great feature set for back-end management of your donors, which is awesome. Donor management, reporting, uh, lots of customization of reporting, memberships, case management, bit management. Front-end elements, not so much, all right? So the challenge is um, that you have no doubt faced if you have done any forms of the front-end are these, creating multiple contacts or contact types. So. Let's say that you wanted to register um, someone for an event, say a summer camp or something like that, and you wanted to have the parent and the child and maybe multiple people register at the same time. Um, or let's say that you wanted to have a um, networking event or something like that and you wanted to register the organization and the employee at the same time or something like that. Can present some challenges with the limitations with the profile um, profiles that you can have in front-end elements. Controlling responsiveness um, is a big one. So if you want something to display well on your phone, um, and we probably have all heard about Google's cracking down on search results based on responsiveness. So that's pretty important that you have that capability. Um, and then styling form fields. Um, how do they lay out? How do they arrange? Um, how do they flow? And then form pagination. So what if you have a huge form and you want to make it easy for your end user 
So you want to present them a little bit of information at a time to fill out and go through the form. One that's not on here is the um, option to save and return. So if you have a large form, you want to be able to save it, come back to it later, and finish it. So here's um, kind of our approach as far as the right tools for the job. We have built, in, uh, built out some integrations, and they are um, pre-release as of now, um, but you can get your hands on them if you're here at this event. Um, Gravity Forms, how many of you use Gravity Forms in WordPress? All right, how many, how many of you who didn't raise your hand use another form solution in WordPress? What do you use? Okay, so you're just basically capturing contact submissions with it. Okay, so Gravity Forms, um, if you're not familiar with it, is an excellent tool. It's very flexible, and it does just that. It does forms. Um, Thirty-nine dollars a year, very inexpensive uh, for a single website, and um, it allows you to um, design your form with responsive and flexible design. You can control all the elements of the design. Conditional field display, so um, you know why display all the fields when only some apply to that particular candidate. Conditional confirmations, which would be um, if um, you know if they filled out the form one way, you want them to have a certain confirmation. If they filled it out a different way, you want them to have a different confirmation um, based on their choices. So Gravity Forms handles that. Um, very well, and then Civi VIP is where we come in, and we've created an integration layer between Gravity Forms and Civi CRM. So you let Gravity Forms handle all that contact form, you know, event form, all that stuff collection on the front end. You just pass it back to Civi CRM, and then they handle it from there. Um, this allows you to have multiple feeds. So let's say that you wanted to allow three different people of different contact types to register at once. You could do that and pass each one individually back to Civi CRM one at a time and get, get past that limitation of having to create multiple front-end elements for that. Um, same with being able to collect, say, a contact form submission um, that includes an activity and maybe a follow-up of some kind. Um, the other thing that's great about that is, again, conditional feed processing. So based on the um, choices that they select in the form, let's say they select, and this is not something that we have yet, but this is a good example. Um, let's say they select recurring, a recurring contribution versus a single contribution. You could process a different feed for the recurring contribution than you would for the single um, and make it conditional that way. Contact management and reporting. Uh, so Civi CRM handles everything that you would expect it to on the back end. Everything goes directly in there and it's all one big happy family. All right, you guys wanna see some, some things in action. Let's take a look at some demos. All right, so we have a uh, sample site set up, um, which uh, we will be um, uh, putting public access to um, in the next week or so, so you guys can go in and play around with it. Um, but we have a couple examples here. Um, contact us form, uh, which basically has uh, first, last email, phone address, and um, a message. And so we can go ahead and fill that out. <clears throat> All right. Submit. Now, um, before that submission occurs uh, from a technical standpoint, that feed is processed into Civi CRM. And so if there are any fields that are incorrect or required that are missing, it will alert them here with the Civi CRM prompts so that you're not missing data or something like that. And we'll go look and see 
uh, what these look like on the back end in a minute. Camp sign up um, is a little bit more complex of a form. So we have uh, parent and guardian information here. Uh, the other great thing about this is um, we've done some interesting workarounds in the past, and I'm not going to get into all that because it will boggle your mind and it will confuse you. But um, the challenge is um, to get a form that's uh, complicated like this, we had to do some custom setup and coding. And so um, it wasn't always pretty, the information as it was collected on the back end, per se. This, if this information is already in the system and they put a different date of birth or a different address, it updates that automatically. So again, you have that advantage of, because you're tying these two pieces together, you're not having to maintain your data, it's being maintained automatically by your clients. So there's the parent information. As you can see, we have pagination. So now we hit next, and we're on the next page where we collect the child information for this summer camp. All right, and that's not required, so I'm not gonna fill it out. Although that probably is. Okay, so, um, so I've completed that. Um, and those, are, those forms were just inserted, inserted in the pages with default styling. I did nothing to style them. In fact, if I go back here and I take a look at this paginated one, and I make it, you know, smaller format. It stacks the fields for me depending on how I have it designed, how I have it. Uh, These are gravity forms? These are gravity forms, yep. So let's go take a look at the back end real quick. Um, so first of all, I want to show you uh, that this information got into Civi CRM. All right, so I was already in the system, and this is me, Nathan Porter. Um, however, my information wasn't complete. Now it is. You can see I have a date of birth, age, gender, and then I have these activities that were created. So I have a camp sign-up activity that was created from the submission and then relationships were added based on the organization and the child of. So I have, this is my child, Roxy Porter, employee of RT Imagine. Those were added based on the form input that was created. And then Roxy Porter has her um, information that I filled out in here as well. So all that was created. Um, Yes. So um, you're eventually going to want this to have um, an event sign up for Roxy. Yes. And um, uh, the contribution associated with the event would either be on, probably on your um, contact rather than Roxy's. Yes. Yeah, the, um, it automatically creates, um, right. So you, you would be able, to, the events and contributions are not there yet. Um, we are testing them right now. But the activity by default gets created on the default or the first contact that's created. Yeah, so I was, I'm more interested in the stuff that relates to the 
Yep, absolutely. <laughs> so um, if we go look at these forms, let's just take a quick look at how this is set up. So when you go to um, your gravity form, you set it up um, just as you would without necessarily thinking about what Civi CRM needs or wants. Um, so I just put in here, you know, name, gender, date of birth, <coughs> employer, address fields. Um, if you haven't used gravity forms, a lot of those are pre-made pre fields, so they're easy to insert. And then what you do on, um, to get this linked to Civi CRM is simply a um, kind of matching fields thing. So I go here to my form settings, Civi CRM add-on. And then I can have as many of these feeds as I want. Um, when I add a feed, the first one is always going to be a contact because that's a required uh, a prerequisite to um, an activity or something like that. Yes. Do you usually add one to perform, or? Not necessarily. You can add you 10, 20, 30. Things. So the, um, the instance would be, uh, let's say I take a contact form, for instance. You probably, you, um, you probably have one contact feed, which is the name, the employer, and then you'd have one activity feed, which would create the activity for that contact form submission. Uh, so let's just say, Toost contact and it pulls the fields from Civi, so it takes a second. What contact type? We'll say individual. And then I go down through here and I just match up these fields. So first name, first name, last name, last name. And it's just the whole way down through. Then if I want to get more complicated like I did with the camp sign up form. I can go down here and I can say add contact. So it adds an additional contact. And I can say subtype, individual, household, or, organ or organization. I can create a relationship. So I can say this is spouse of, child of. And then I, I map those fields as well. Um, and then at the very bottom is the option to enable condition. And so I can base that on any field. So I can say, if this field answer is no, do not process this feed. So um, in this case, I'm not going to save that. <clears throat> but in this case, we have uh, the contact feed and the camp registration. If we go look at it, you'll see it's pretty much exactly like what I just kind of demonstrated we have first name, last name, gender, date of birth, employer, address, email, website, and then we have child of as the relationship for the second contact. And then for the um, activity that's created, um, and the, each feed is uh, kind of tailored to whatever content type that it is. So you can see in activity, we have some selections that we can make. So it's an existing activity type that's in Civi CRM. Um, you can go create whatever custom activity type you want. Status can be scheduled, completed, pending, whatever. And then priority can be set urgent, normal, whatever. And then you just map your fields for um, whatever information is relevant to you. Yes? So this is beautiful for activities. I'm just wondering how easy it's going to be for you to um, roll this out for other objects in Civi CRM. Does this require a lot of programming on your part, or um, once you do something, it just goes flows quickly? Um, so, for example, what? to give you more context, um, grants are supported by Webform Civi CRM and Drupal. Yep. And so there are custom um, grant fields that might be for a yes. A whole bunch of work on nope. your part to, um, Once you have that um, data type set up, any custom fields are, are automatically added. So all widgets and yep. Really all you don't have to do a lot of programming to create this. Nothing. Yeah, absolutely. That includes fields within the city case or the volunteer module. Uh, 
Right. So right right now, the only thing that this supports is contacts and activities. When we add those things, it'll be built so. so It'll be built similarly to the way these are. So if on the contact you add a custom field, it's going to show up here for you to be able to map to it. So once we do contributions and events and those kind of things, it'll be the same story with those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, are you looking at January next year for all those? Or? Um, well, I guess um, there's two <laughs> aspects to it. One is how quickly can we get it done? And the second is um, how uh, how, re how realistic is it in terms of the audience and the user base and that kind of thing to put that amount of resources into it? So, mm -hmm. yeah. So could you do something like a make it happen? Kind of campaign well, or? so here's, um, we could, um, and we actually consider that um, quite heavily. Um, so here's what we kind of came up with, and that is that while the WordPress community is large, the WordPress user base of Civi Serum is fairly small. And so um, I feel like a Make It Happen campaign or something like that probably wouldn't have broad enough appeal to, to gain the support needed to do something like this. So what we've chosen to do with Civi VIP is to make it a premium model, which is similar to Gravity Forms or any of those other sorts of things. How much are you looking for per year? So uh, this Gravity Forms integration is $79 a year. And um, Per se, yep. Um, right now, uh, being that it's um, somewhat pre-launch, um, we're offering it $49 for your first year if you want to get in on it and play around with it. So. And just because I'm very interested in that business model, um, uh, in WordPress, it seems um, often the plugins, um, you pay for them to get the lender support, but you can get them without any support. Or, and so I don't really rock the uh, business model in WordPress yet. Yeah. So how does that work? And how many uh, users would typically not pay and use the work plugin somehow anyway for a typical WordPress plugin? <clears throat> Most WordPress users are, um, are more concerned in the functionality that it offers them and the time savings. And so a lot of them will make, if, they, if they're using it actively, they're going to maintain their membership for that plugin. Um, so Gravity Forms, for instance, uh, Gravity Forms, uh, WooCommerce, um, Optin Monster, Mapify Pro, um, all have a premium model. Some, some are freemium, some are fully premium. Um, and what happens is if you don't pay uh, your membership annually, then you can continue to use it at the current version, but you won't get updates. And so it creates a security risk. Um, to do that. GPL. Yeah. GPL3, yep. And so presumably you could ask a friend to give you a copy and that. Right. Um, but no one seems yeah. to do that. Yeah, and, and people, people do that. I mean, it, it's okay. inevitable. Yeah. Um, people even, people. The code is all GPL. In theory, in the WordPress model, I'm sorry, I'm answering Yeah, go ahead. Is um, you're going to pay for the support um, and for the updates because Gravity Forms is a true premium plugin, it's behind a paywall. WooCommerce is more of a freemium. You can download for free the base plugin, but there's a ton of add ons that all cost real money. Um, so, you know, but once you have your hands on the code, the code is a derivative product product of WordPress and it is GPLV2. That, that, um, but people just pay. Oh, yeah. People just pay. Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, um, and this is kind of getting off off track a little bit, but with WooCommerce is a, is a great example because they're a big target. So, there's lots of people that take um, a version of WooCommerce plugins and will say, "I'll give you all these plugins for $157 or whatever," um, which would cost you know thousands otherwise, and um, they they can sue those people based on. Uh, trademark infringement. Mm -hmm. um, so there is there is some recourse there, even though it's GPL. <clears throat> All right, so that's a little side lesson for you. Yeah. Okay. Just one quick question. So I, I get the sense. I don't know if you get the same sense. The reason why WordPress isn't used more with Civi is because of things like this. Be yeah, because it's not. 
it's not easy to integrate with the front end, absolutely. Yep, absolutely. And, and that's a big deal because what is the biggest, I mean, the, there could be any number of answers people could give. What is the biggest incentive for installing a CRM right alongside your website? If, if integration isn't like your biggest reason, I don't know what, what else would be. So I think there's a big you know, reason for that, yeah. Yeah. Just to play devil's advocate, though, I'll argue that there's a lot of small organizations who they want WordPress because WordPress is easy. They do a contribution page and maybe two or three events, if that, one or two events a year. And City, with the level of integration, works great. And you do one thing, you add a, a, a role editor, a role uh, manager, so they can have a, a couple of additional roles. And it's really, and it really works great. So if they want to do anything more sophisticated, absolutely, stuff like this is fantastic. But don't discount the number of small organizations that are out there that go to WordPress because it's easy, and that city works great for them. But yeah. I'll tell you, I'm a fairly technical person. I know WordPress really well um, for many years. Um, I try to put a form on a, a, a page from city, and I'm boggled by whether the information is going to be publicly visible, searchable, um, you know, if people are going to be able to back back through my form into my contact database. So I think that profile session is going on right now. I didn't know which one. I didn't know either. It's kind of the same problem. <laughs> let, me, um, let me just say one thing, and that is that um, fundraising is critical for most organizations. And so if you can't give a donation on your phone or you can't give a donation or your donation page isn't ranked well because it's not responsive, that becomes a big problem when every dollar counts for those, even those small organizations. So. The city point, they, they, I mean, they work. I mean, I can. They're not at all responsive. That being said, I have no problem with, I, I, like, with the... <laughs> I'm just saying for a lot of small organizations, I just, I, don't, I think it's an unfair thing across the board to say, well, it, it really is not any good because there's a lot of small organizations who city integrating with WordPress, even at the levels that it does right now, was a godsend for them. And it'll be, interest, it'll be interesting to see what the numbers are on the, num the growth in the WordPress sites with city versus... Yeah, I'm excited. Well, th the problem that I see right now is Civi has been available to the WordPress community for five years? No, three. Four, three. three? Okay, down, down, down. All right, so um, three years, and the WordPress community is, what, like 40, 50 million? So, you know, if we have a couple hundred sites that are using it on WordPress, that's not a good number. environments mm -hmm. so I can have multiple sites on there and they're really easy to put out. The moment I start using the Civi CRM registration, uh, I start hitting issues with the, the shared environments cache. Yes. Uh, so that's where now I'm like, okay, I can't use a shared environment. Let me go to a VPS. I'm going to go to Drupal, you know, because now I'm doing that work. So that's, that's my logic. Um, is there Same any? Here's a, here's a question for you. We we have uh, we have uh, a couple clients that are using Civi multi-site and it works well after some modifications, um, but uh, but it works fine. Um, the question f for you on that is um, uh, if it's f the interface is a big is a big deal for a lot of people. So if you train someone on one interface and you know the options for plugins out there. You know, if you're just using it for Civi, then sure, go Drupal. But if you're using it for a website and all this other stuff, you know, there's a thousands more opportunities out there in the WordPress plugin space than in the Drupal space. But. All right. 
Um, any questions? I think we've kind of covered some already, but any, any more questions? And I'm going to talk a little bit about some other stuff if I have time here. What are the other big forms? There's two or three form builders in WordPress. Yeah, so Gravity Forms is by far the largest um, in terms of a variety of forms. Contact Form 7 is like huge as well, but it just does contact forms. Um, Ninja Forms is a little bit more developer focused. Um, and there's probably a couple others. Um, so what's that? Contact yeah, Contact Form 7. Yep. Yes. So um, I think that Web Access was doing um, an integration with some form builder in WordPress. Um, and they were intending to go to uh, some sort of similar revenue model, but I haven't seen it. Have you collaborated at all with them? Yeah, this is a collaboration with them. Okay. Yeah. And um, I know that in some discussions with Tim and Coleman, they are looking at replacing the city CRM form technology because it's very Okay. Cheap. And so there was and still is, I think, a discussion around um, getting rid of all of our form layer and adopting a new technology. And they were. Okay. Yeah, that's bring it on. I, I, I want to have it be more accessible for users. That's my focus with it. Um, the, this is all tied in through the API. So as long as the API is consistent, um, you know, then this is a long-term solution. So um, another one, uh, which um, there have been some attempts at this in the past, um, City uh, VIP Mailchimp integration. Um, and what we find with something like this, there are some, there are some use cases where a Mailchimp integration makes sense. Uh, there's a lot of use cases where using the default mailing tools in Civi makes sense. So it just depends on what your scenario is, what the technical skill of your staff is, and that kind of thing. Um, but we do know that email campaigns and SMS campaigns are important to engagement for a lot of these organizations. Um, here are some statistics. Um, engagement with nonprofit organizations in terms of donors and donations. 79% um, um, uh, I guess response or success with email. 78% with phone or SMS campaigns. Um, and then Facebook 58% games 48% shopping 20%. So you can see that email and phone um, um, campaigns are important for nonprofit organizations. Um, one of our nonprofit organizations based in Connecticut um, does a weekly email, and um, the content is pulled directly from their news feed on their website. Um, so they have content creators throughout that week creating and generating all this content on their website, and then they want to send a summary of it to their clients, customized in an email format. So with MailChimp, we can do that with an RSS feed, and it's automated. So there's no you know, styling and designing and creating that email. It happens automatically. So it's another way for them to kind of promote their contact, content get in front of their constituents without um, really very little interference with their staff. So they used to do the same thing with their staff creating these emails, and so we eliminated a whole need for a whole position, which they were able to put to another, you know, use. How is that different than the, what Mailchimp offers as far as a template of RSS? Like you go into Mailchimp, it has that already. So, so why would I do okay, that? so um, the the RSS is mail is the Mailchimp feature. What the Civi VIP Mailchimp integration does is it syncs your Mailchimp list to your Civi CRM contacts. So if you have a group in Civi CRM and you want to say, you know, link this group to this MailChimp mailing list, you can do that. We have one client who has, um, they're an international um, journalism agency. They have 2,500 journalists and they have 20 websites that are in different languages. And so they want to collect uh, email for their email newsletters but it's 
a daunting task to try to do that with, with CIVI CRM. So they just collect it with gravity forms, it goes into MailChimp, and then we're able to pull down those contacts into CIVI CRM for MailChimp. Mm -hmm. So it's another way of syncing that data. Aren't, aren't there other CIVI MailChimp integrations? Extensions? There is one in particular that I know of right now. Um, however, um, I've heard that I've heard there are some issues with it. Uh, one of the issues that I heard, and this may be resolved by now, but is that if a contact gets deleted in MailChimp, it gets deleted in Civi, which it creates a kind of a problem. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, the other thing that's nice about this is you can set it up uh, linked with WP Cron without having to have a uh, special cron job set up in the back end of, of the server, and it will automatically synchronize the list twice a day. Um, and you can see when it was last synced and that kind of thing. So, uh, any questions about uh, Civi Mailchimp integration? That one is not released yet, so um, it's still in testing. We're still developing it. Uh, we want to make sure we're not deleting contacts from Civi <laughs> when they're deleted in MailChimp. Um, geo con so this is kind of, um, you know, Civi CRM, um, what I love about Civi CRM is that you can slice and dice your data any way you want to. You can export it, you know, to CSV. You can uh, create smart groups based on zip code, all those great things. So why not use that data that you've collected to help you in geo-targeting your content on your website? So um, we don't have an integration for that yet, but there is a tool um, that allows you to at least do the front-end geo-IP targeting um, from Flytonic. Um, and basically what it does is it geo-targets based on IP address. And it's um, kind of broad. It doesn't do so well on a city level, for instance, but um, for languages, it's great. So if they're in a country, you can feed, you can serve that language to them, and so forth and so on. So um, perhaps I'm missing something. So running a city here and get a contact in it, it will geocode based on the address for the contact. Right. And then what's Flytronic doing? Flytronic is um, is is filtering your content on the front of, of the website by that geo target. So, yeah. So, if they're logged in, it can use the data in Civi. If they're not logged in, it can use their IP address to target it. Um, and that's great, even for uh, you know um, national organizations who want to give a different story to the Midwest than they do the South versus the Northeast. So, it's a great way of targeting your content that way. Um, Civi member role sync has been around uh, for a while, hasn't been updated in a while. Um, and um, basically, if you don't know about it, what it does is if you have a membership in Civi CRM that's active or in any state really, it can check with that membership status and sync it to a role in WordPress for your user. So if someone has a gold level membership, you can give them automatic access to gold membership <coughs> content on your website, for instance. Um, so it's pretty straightforward. The nice thing about it is that if the membership is expired, it can restrict their access to that content. So it does that check every time they log in. Um, one thing that we would like to do to enhance it a little bit is to also add the ability to assign a role based on um, that person's uh, relationship. So an organization could have a membership and all the employees can inherit it, or a household can all have a membership and all the children can inherit it. But you may want to have that head of household to have a different level of access than the kids or vice, you know, vice versa. So that's something we'd like to add to that. All right, thanks. Thank